All right, so uh, these, what are we doing these days? We are uh, talking about electrochemistry, and uh, we're looking at uh, galvanic cells, which are, or voltaic cells, again, whoever you're a bigger fan of, Galvani or Volta, which use uh, spontaneous redox reactions to produce current. And one of the ways we measure how, uh, or rather which way, the reaction is going to go and produce that current is using the cell potential or the voltage difference between the two half cells. Uh, we're going to compare everything to the standard hydrogen electrode, which is zero volts. And then basically, if it's uh, higher potential energy, high cell, higher cell potential, it's going to have a negative voltage. If it's lower potential energy, lower cell uh, voltage, cell potential, uh, it will have a positive value. And of course, we've done that with lots and lots and lots of half reactions, um, and we get the values. And now that we've got individual half cell voltages, we can uh, look at two half cells and figure out which way the uh, electrons are going to flow and with what potential, with what voltage. All right. uh, so this uh, table's uh, written in order of, depending on how you look at it, uh, if you're going up this group, it's a stronger oxidizing agent. And so oxidizing agent, agency reverses role. So if you're an oxidizing agent, you would be reduced. If you're oxidizing something, you're being reduced. So what does that mean you're doing? You're gaining. gaining electrons, all right? And then as you go down the list, down this table, they're weaker oxidizing agents or stronger reducing agents. So if they're a reducing agent, they're being oxidized, they're losing electrons, they're better at giving away electrons. And that should make sense, even with the chemistry we know, just in a general chemistry class, we know enough to make sense of this, okay? So let's look at a couple of examples. So sodium, sodium's a good one. Sodium plus one electron produces sodium solid uh, with a negative 2.71 cell potential value for volts, okay? So does that make sense? So which is more stable? Sodium, the cation, or sodium, the atom? Which do you eat? Which do you need in your diet? You need sodium in your diet. What are you eating? Are you eating sodium the cation or sodium the atom? <coughs> the cation. You're eating the cation. Sodium the cation that's already lost its electron. Sodium the atom is a very reactive metal that reacts violently with water, so it would taste like ouch. Okay? So you don't want to eat sodium. All right? So of course, yes, we need sodium. Calcium, we need potassium. All of these are much more stable as the cation once they lose that one valence electron. All right, at the other end of the table, fluorine or fluoride. Which one do you want to brush your teeth with? Fluorine gas or fluoride? Fluoride, fluoride yes, fluoride is very good for your teeth. Fluorine gas is highly toxic. Wouldn't, wouldn't recommend doing that, okay? Uh, fluoride is very stable, so it wants to gain that electron. So when you're looking up, looking at this table, basically what you can do is you can think about it as electrons go this way. Electrons want to go to the higher oxidizing, the stronger oxidizing agent. So fluorine's going to want to grab electrons. Sodium's want to go, going to want to give them away. So electrons would go up this table. Okay. So if you're going to figure out who's going to gain the electrons, it's whoever's higher on this list. Or we can actually just calculate the cell potential, okay? So let's try that with example 18.5, okay? So let's uh, calculate the cell potential and uh, determine if it's a spontaneous or non-spontaneous reaction. That's what, basically what we're gonna do here. So to look up these values, you have to figure out what's going on, what's the half reactions, and also, since we're gonna use this equation, E sub cell, so our cell potential, just like any potential energy difference, always final minus initial, okay? They're going to the cathode, that's my final place for the electron, minus the anode. All right, so what's going on here in A? So iron oxidation state just by itself would be what? Zero, right? Yeah. What about magnesium plus two? Plus two. Plus two. Iron plus two? Plus two. Plus two. Zero. 
and zero. All right, so what's going on? Iron's going from zero to plus two. It's being oxidized, yep, it's losing electrons. And then what's going on with, uh, let's do magnesium and blue. Magnesium's going from a plus two to a zero, so it's being reduced. So it's gaining two electrons. All right, so this was my reduction reaction. This was my oxidation reaction, all right? So now we just need to figure out which one's occurring at the cathode, which one's occurring at the anode. So where does oxidation happen? Okay. So cathode's where the electrons are going, right? They're going to go to the cathode. They're attracted to the positive charge, right? Not that there's a real positive charge. That's not how I think about it, okay? So if you, you know, if we drew a quick little electrochemical cell, all right? Electrons are going to go in this direction. All right. So where are they going to go? They're going to the cathode. I'm not happy with how I wrote that. They're coming from the anode. So they're attracted to the positive. They're being repelled by the negative. All right, so electrons are coming here. Something's going to pick up these electrons. When something gains electrons, what do we call it? Reduction. So redu reduction occurs at the cathode. Oxidation occurs at the anode. Now, I don't have a really good way of uh, helping you remember this, but there's a, like, I don't know, what would you call it, mnemonic device. Yeah. If you think about it, it's called an ox car. So, an ox car. Like an ox cart, like an ox, like a bull pulling a cart. An ox cart. I could draw an ox in a cart, but I won't. I could definitely do that, though, like really well. And you would definitely be able to tell what it is. So, yes, that's very much so. So an, anode, is oxidation, and then cathode and reduction together, so car. Or you could do an ox red cat. An ox red cat? That's what I was calling. An ox red cat. Okay, we'll work with it. So an ox red cat. Okay, an ox red cat. Whatever works for you. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever dots your I's, crosses your T's. I don't think those are good sayings in this setting. But I said it. All right, so now we know which one's the cathode, which one's the anode. Now we just need to go look up the cell potentials. So let's look up our E sub, sorry, E cell. It's going to be our cathode minus, so cathode's a reduction. So what's this one going to equal to? So we just need to look up the uh, reduction cell potential for magnesium. So we go up to this table and we find magnesium. Oh, magnesium's right here. I should probably highlight it. Negative 2.37. Is that highlighted for you enough? Okay. So negative 2.37. What are my units again for cell potential? There is one. Volts. 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 
joules per coulomb. All right, now let's look up uh, iron. Now with the transition metals, you gotta be a little careful because they can do some different chemistry. They can gain or lose different amounts of electrons. So when you're looking for iron, iron three plus plus three electrons, is that what we want? Nope. Iron plus two plus two electrons goes iron? Yeah, so that's the one. Iron gaining or losing two. They're always written as a reduction, so don't worry about that. But iron, two electrons, plus two. So a negative 0.45. Negative 0.45. That's still in highlighting mode, clearly. Let's put that back on pen. Negative 0 0.45. <coughs> All right, so my cathode minus my anode, so that's going to be negative 2.37 volts minus a negative 0 0.45 volts. So that's be negative 2.37 plus 0.45. I'll save you a click on your calculator. Uh, yeah. Negative 1.92. Thank you. All right. So what does that mean? What was cell potential? Is that spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Non-spontaneous. The electrons want to go to the higher positive uh, voltage, so if it's negative, it is non-spontaneous. And I definitely know, not, know how to spell spontaneous. Okay, so guess what? What's that mean? Magnesium is not gonna oxidize iron. But what it does mean is that the other way around would be spontaneous. That's for uh, redox reactions, it's pretty easy. The reverse is always going to be spontaneous. All right, so if you calculate it one way, it would flip them, cathode minus anode, flip the electrodes, it would give you positive 0.192, which you saw in the lab. All right, let's do that. Do uh, B. That was so much fun. Everyone's had such a good time. Like two people even thought about high fiving. I know you didn't like motion or move, but I could feel it. I could feel it. Two people out there wanted to high five. All right. So iron is again going from zero to plus two. So I know that's going to be my oxidation half reaction. It's the same one, same reaction, that is. Nope. So what's my potential, what's my reduction half reaction? Well, what's going on here? Lead is going from plus two to zero, so it's being reduced, so that's my reduction half reaction. <coughs> so basically, we're asking, uh, okay, magnesium didn't oxidize iron, how about lead? Would lead oxidize iron? I am eager to find out. Actually, I know. All right, so I already know my cell potential for iron, same one, so negative 0 0.45 volts. Now I just need to look up LEDs. So let's find lead, let's find some lead, lead plus two, here's lead plus two, uh, negative 0. Point, point 0. 0.013. It's not so.
Right, final minus initial. Final minus initial, cathode minus anode. However you want to do it. This time it's going to be zero, my reduction at the cathode, negative 0 0.13 volts minus a negative 0 0.45 volts. What is negative 0.13 volts minus a negative 0 0.45 volts? 0 0.32 volts? Positive or negative? Positive? So is that spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Spontaneous. So lead would oxidize iron.